Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series on Lewis's Trilemma, the Liar, Lunatic, Lord argument. In this video, we're going to be looking at the case for Jesus being a liar. Now, C.S. Lewis argued that Jesus was either a liar, a lunatic, or God. Lewis claimed that anyone that respected Jesus' teachings could not believe that he was a liar, that he was a con man that was tricking people for popularity. Others have made similar arguments that claim Jesus couldn't have been a con man because he wouldn't have sacrificed himself. He would have recanted at the last minute when his life was on the line. In this video, we will look at objections to this claim. In other words, ways in which Jesus might have been a liar. Let's take a look. Now, one of the central challenges to this argument that we'll see in various ways throughout the series is that the story of Jesus written in the Bible is inaccurate. The Gospels were written around a century after Jesus' death, and if you don't already believe that Jesus is God, you have no reason to believe that the Bible is a factual book and, merely a, and not merely a work of fiction. In ancient times, there wasn't as clear of a distinction between fiction and nonfiction, so it's possible that many of the authors intended to tell parables with the point of relating moral messages, instead of actually account history accurately. Not all of the objections require questioning the story as presented, and some of them are completely consistent with the story as presented in the Bible, but some of them do. So, the first possible explanation is that Jesus was depressed to the point of being suicidal. Many famous people who appear to have obtained everything they dreamed of, and to all of their friends are quite happy, are secretly depressed and even suicidal became very depressed. What if Jesus were the greatest con man ever, but he became very depressed and so was willing to let himself be killed? If it's even possible that he could be a liar but also be willing to be killed, the claim that Jesus was not a con man as a con man would not have actually sacrificed himself can't be supported because maybe he was suicidal and he was okay having someone kill him. That said, Lewis's weaker claim seems plausible under this scenario. If you think Jesus was a moral human teacher, he couldn't have been a liar, as con men do not make good moral teachers. It seems unlikely that you would think a suicidal con man was a good moral teacher. So you can't think that he's both a good moral teacher and a suicidal con man. But that might at least explain for the other argument why someone that was a very good con man might be willing to sacrifice himself. Another possible explanation is that Jesus is not some grand con man who lied about everything, but rather someone that lied about just a couple things to pursue a greater good. Perhaps he believed that the only way to make people more moral, the only way to get them to do good, was to lie to them and tell them that he was the Son of God. Maybe Jesus was just a utilitarian that believed the most effective way to make people good was to lie to them and convince them that there was this whole process of you need to be nice to each other in order to get into heaven. Maybe he didn't believe any of that, but realized that by telling them that story, they would do more good, and it would create good. He saw he had a platform, and he wanted to do good, and the most effective way to do that was to tell this story of, I'm the Messiah, if you do what I say, you'll get into heaven, go be nice to each other. This seems to be a sufficient objection to both versions of this argument. Such a Jesus might sacrifice himself not because he thought he was God, but because he thought it would be the most effective way to convince people to do good. And it seems like at least some people could view him as a good moral teacher, even as a liar in this case, since they might be utilitarians themselves and might think that there are some situations in which it is moral to lie, particularly if those lies have the potential to lead to more good. An objection that questions the accuracy of this account is the possibility that Jesus did recant under questioning, but was killed anyway. Surely, any texts that are purporting to show Jesus' divinity would leave out his admitting that actually he made everything up. Books that question Jesus' divinity were destroyed by the church and removed from the Bible. At the very least, it seems like this is a possible explanation of why Jesus could be a liar, but still be put to death because he did recant, we just cut that out of the story because it made him look bad. If we think that Jesus recanted his claims about being the Son of God, but not his claims about how to be a good person, it seems we could still think him a good moral teacher. Because maybe he said, you know what, I was just trying to convince people. It, it could be a similar story to before, that he was trying to 
lie just about being the son of God, but was telling the truth about all of his moral claims, and he recanted his claims to being the son of God because he didn't want to die, but kept the things about being a good moral teacher. And his followers, perhaps not out of a sense of self-serving and promoting their own religion, but rather out of a sense of trying to pass on the message of him being a good person and caring about these good things, perhaps they were the ones that took out the his recantation because they thought him claiming that he was the son of God would be a more effective message to people, and leaving out the part where he lied would be better at convincing people to do good. The final objection to this view is that the Gospels are very wrong, and Jesus actually lived. The entire story of his death was invented, possibly by Jesus himself, to spread the popularity of his ideas. If the conception that Lewis gives us of this horrible con man that is lying about everything, once again, that seems like a false dichotomy, but if that's what we're taking, there doesn't seem to be a big leap to say that he lied about his death, too. There's no video proof in these times, certainly. If he and a group of his followers were in on it, they could easily spread lies to increase their fame and fortune to neighboring towns and villages that he had been killed, even staging elaborate scenes where he seems to come back from the dead and appear to people because he's actually still alive, but everyone goes in saying, oh, he's dead, he died, he looks like this, oh wow, there's a ghost, look at that, he must be the Messiah. People struggle to tell fact from fiction in the modern world. Despite video evidence and modern science, there are still thousands of people who think that the earth is flat, that aliens landed in New Mexico and are being experimented on by the government, or that the world is ruled by shape-shifting lizard people. If people will believe these things when we have video evidence to the contrary, it seems likely many people would believe a story about someone coming back from the dead in a time where everyone believed in magic and miracles. So it seems fully possible that this whole story was made up by Jesus and his friends to promote their new breakaway sect of Judaism that they're, we're calling Christianity. What do you think? Is there a chance that Jesus was the greatest con man of all time? Or maybe just a good man who told a few lies to try to make the world a better place? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Remember with this argument, all that it takes is the possibility that any of these were true. Even if you think that they're wrong, if it's at least possible that they're true, it's enough to defeat the argument. Because for Lewis to be right, the only three options can be that he's a complete con man, that he's a complete lunatic, or that he's inherently God. If there's anything else we can weasel in there, the argument's done. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.